Oh, we're rolling? We're rolling. All right, who's this video for? It's for my favorite, Julie. All right, And Kevy. And Kevy. Okay, we're gonna do a split, but not really. Here's how I do a split. Although, you know, I use different types of tops. This is telescoping lid, but, oh no, we have a double deep configuration. And this double deep configuration, it has brood in both areas, right? In both brood boxes. So if we were to hold these frames out here like this, there'd be brood spread across both of these potentially. Why? Because there's no queen excluder between them. We'll get the queen excluder in a second. What we want to do is we want to take all the brood above the queen excluder and the rest of the bees and the queen in particular below the queen excluder and we want the queen excluder down here. So how do we do splits quickly and easily, especially if we have a mated wonderful queen like the 100 or 150 of them I have showing up a little early in the next few days, I hope. Um, well, what we do is this, we separate them and, uh, and we might start going like this, we might say, okay, we got brood frames. Let's shake some bees off. They're not gonna like it, but we got some brood frames over here. And we got some more brood frames. We don't take them all, but we're gonna take some brood frames out of there, shake the bees down, okay? And maybe one more, shake the bees down. And now, we know the queen's not on these frames because we shook the bees up, right? But we don't know if she's up top or not. So we're gonna take the frames up top, shake the bees down, so it's a, uh, resource frame, we'll put it in here. Go to the other side, shake the bees down. Resource frame, we'll put it in here. Now we've got brood, because it's a brilliant hive. Let's just shake all the bees off, including the queen. Boom, boom, we're gonna shake all the bees off. Shake all the bees off, put the brood back. Shake all the bees off, maybe even spot the queen. Put the queen down here. Maybe there's a frame of brood down here, maybe, right? We decide. What are our most well-developed frames of brood? Most of the cap brood. We want that up top, right? And we like to set them up so that the brood and resource frames that we're going to use to make our splits are all together. So if we bring this thing back and hold it up like this, it might go something like this. Resource frame, brood, brood, resource frame, brood, brood. Resource frame, brood, brood, resource frame. How many resource frames do I have? Five. Brood, resource, resource. Brood, brood, resource. Brood, brood, resource. Brood, brood, resource, right? So we can make three, maybe four splits out of this depending on what strength we want. Two frames of brood and a resource frame. Hey, so I'm sure Julie knows, but what's a resource frame? Honey, uh, pollen, just food. All right, we have brood, we have food. Is this what you would refer to as a checkerboard pattern then? This is not a checkerboard pattern. Checkerboarding is different. That's for drawing comb. All, all these are drawn out and they're all full of babies, right? Okay. But almost no bees. So now what are we gonna do? Now that we got all the bees and the queen and everybody, they're all crowded down here. They hate it because we just shook them out of their homes. That's where the queen excluder comes in. Take the queen excluder, put it on here gently. Try to avoid smushing the bees. And then we put the brood that we're going to use to make our splits up top. Ta-da! Put our lid back on. Again, I use migratory, but whatever. Put our lid on. There we go. And we're done for a little while. Now, I like to wait till the next morning because it's the coolest part of the day before the sun comes up. Guess what happens when we open this? All of a sudden, all the bees have come up through the excluder except the queen, right? Queen can't get through. But they're up here taking care of the brood, and we can very easily grab an extra frame of resources, take a boatload of bees, and we might drop that in there. We might drop an undrawn frame. We can grab one. We might grab an undrawn frame and the feeder. Look at that. And put it in there like so. Especially with bees in it. And we got lots of bees, right? And then we do that, you know, three or four more times, whatever brood we, brood we have, stack them up the way we go. So we close these, right? Make sure no bees are leaking out, which is hard to do on these because they always leak. Now we have a bunch of bees, right? And no queen, because the queen's down here. Yeah? 
So we take these off cycle, two, three miles, whatever. And we let them settle down, reorient, open it. They fly, reorient. Now we have our queen, right? Our queen comes in a cage like so. This might be a super juicy, delicious Rupert Minnesota Hygienic Queen, perhaps. But they'll have a candy plug in here. A lot of times I'll tape the end of it to keep her in there longer. But there you go. What we're going to do is we're going to take this nuke. Now they've settled down a little bit. We're going to open it up. And we're going to look at all of the frames. Are there any emergency queens? If there are, we're going to smush them. If there's any emergency queen cells, I should say. So within 24, 48 hours, we're smushing them. Even within a few hours, they may be getting started. Sometimes if we're in a hurry and we make these right away, we might take this queen and then put her in right away. Just if we're in a hurry, right? Sometimes you just get in a hurry. So we're gonna put this in, oh, about like so. Smush these together. And then we're gonna close this up. Now we'll come back in two or three days because we don't want them to chew the candy out and release her too soon. We might take that tape off, put it in here, close it. And now they'll chew up and eat all that candy but we're going to put the lid on this thing. We're not going to look at, touch, or even walk by it for about seven days. So a total of 10 days, three days where they're getting used to the pheromones, unable to eat the candy, seven more days, maybe even 10, doesn't matter, whenever you get back to them. And you're going to open this carefully and go, okay, has our queen been released? If she has, great. You might close it, give it another couple days, or you might just start looking to see if there's eggs. Okay. If there's eggs, you know she's laying, great. If she hasn't been released for some reason, this is where I'll actually take this, grind it out, either hand release her or take all the, the candy out of there so she can walk out. And I'll close it up again for a few days. The thing is, if they don't have time to get used to the pheromone, if they think they've produced their own emergency queen, they will ball, which is another way to say kill this new juicy expensive queen you bought, okay? So don't now do that. that, yeah, don't do that. Now that the queen is released, running around, da 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 da, you wait till night, close it up, move it to another side if you want to, let them go uh, for a little while, check their progress. When they've built out that last frame and they have three frames of brood, they're strong with population, three frames of brood, you know, you could pull that feeder out, then, then I like to say three frames of brood, two frames of food at that point, it's a nuke, it's ready to go. You can take this, put it in brand new equipment, And you got a hive, right? If this was empty at least. And now you've installed a nuke. Now the nuke is installed, away you go. You would never install a nuke in a double deep. Well, you normally wouldn't, unless you have lots of drawn comb. Most new beekeepers don't. But if it was a single, and it was mostly undrawn, now you'd have five drawn and partially drawn frames in the middle and you can start to checkerboard at that point. Might as well cover checkerboarding, right? Long video. Checkerboarding might look something like this. You know, the little five frames, one, two, three, four, five, are the nuke that you put in here. The outside frames might be food. And if the temperatures were, let's say, above 70 degrees at night, you could say, go, you know what? Let's break up this a little bit and let's move some undrawn in here, force them to draw a little bit more. Right? As they do that, then you can draw a little bit more, a little bit more. You can even break up the brood nest when you're more confident and bring in undrawn frames right into the middle. It really makes them mad, but they have to draw it out faster because you've broken up the brood nest. You do that over a week, you know, a few days at a time, depending on how fast they're drawing comb, and eventually you'll have a full deep of drawn comb, okay? Then it's a matter of managing space. You always want your frames tight to the middle. And then you decide, do I want a double or do I want a single? I like to say singles are for food, doubles are for brood. Why are doubles for brood? Because if they brood up on both, you could make a lot more splits since the brood is distributed more widely across more frames. Instead of a single, then you'd really disrupt the population doing that. So there you go, by request. How I do splits, how I was taught to do splits quickly. Do you have any questions? How about you, Julie? <laughs> Julie? Any questions? I can't hear you. <laughs>
A little louder. <laughs> All, All right. right, I know I look terrible. Custom video training for Julie. Good night. Bye.